All right, pre-cal students, welcome to my house and me working some of worksheet seven here. Obviously, I don't know what questions you have, so I will just assume and work kind of one of each, and hopefully you find that helpful. I'll do the same with um, with the review worksheet and post that as well. So let's get started. Now, again, I'm just picking one or two from each section that I think are representative of ones that you would need to know. So number two, use the graph of f of x to sketch the graph of the inverse of f on the same axes. So remember the inverse goes through the line y equals x. So you can visually do it if you're capable of um, sort of visualizing what that looks like. You can also inverse is the big thing is y equals x and x equals y. So you can use that as well. Like here's a point that's labeled for us. That point is 0, 1. So if we switch the x and the y, that point would be 1, 0. And you could try to pick another couple of points if you weren't sure what this thing looked like. Looks like it's close to 1, 3. So if we switch those, we'd get 3, 1. And maybe that's enough to help visualize what this graph is doing. Something like that. So that if I folded the graph along y equals x, it would copy onto itself. 4, 5, and 6. Verify algebraically that f and g are inverses of one another. That means you have to show that f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. So f of g of x, that would be f of x over 2 plus 3, because I plugged in g of x. Now g of x will be my input to the f function. Whatever's in parentheses goes in for x on the other side. So 2 times input minus 6. Now input is x over 2 plus 3. So if I distribute the 2, I get x plus 6 minus 6, which would just be x. So halfway done, not all the way done, just halfway done. That's f of g of x. g of f of x means g of 2x minus 6, because f of x is 2x minus 6. So that becomes, that means that f of x is now the input to the g function. The g function is input divided by 2 plus 3. And in this case, the input is 2x minus 6. Well, divide them both by 2, and we get x minus 3 plus 3 is just x, which is what we knew it would be. And so we verified that f and g are inverses of one another. Next section, using the horizontal line test to determine if the function has an inverse. Uh, that wording isn't the best. Let's say to determine if the function's inverse is a function. Okay, they all have inverses, meaning we can all flip that graph across y equals x and get something new. But the question we really want to know is, once we take the inverse, is the inverse also a function? That's what the horizontal line tells us. So easy to do. There's a horizontal line that hits twice. So no, the inverse is not a function. Pretty simple. Uh, if we look at number 12, any horizontal line we draw would only hit once, so that would be yes, the inverse is a function. Horizontal line test is easy, just making sure you understand what it's telling you. 13, or actually this next section, use, using proper notation, that means the inverse notation, 
Find the inverse if possible. If the function has no inverse, state that no inverse exists. Again, the language is a little bit tricky here. If the funky has if the function has no inverse function, state that no inverse exists. So they all have an inverse, it's just whether the inverse is a function or not. So the big deal is to switch x and y. So y equals negative x cubed plus 1. That's not a switch, that's just changing the notation. In place of y, I put x. In place of x, I put y. And then I need to solve that for y. So let's subtract 1. And then we'll cube root both sides. So y is the cube root of x minus 1. Whoops, I almost boxed that up. I don't want to box it up because it's not quite proper notation yet. Proper notation would be the inverse of f. Here we go. How's that for skirting around the rules a little bit? So with proper notation, the inverse of f is the cube root of x minus 1. Number 14 y equals x squared minus 3. Uh, the inverse then is switch x and y, so x equals y squared minus 3. Add 3 to both sides. So y squared equals x plus 3. Square root both sides, but when you square root both sides you have to remember to put the plus or minus on there. And then because the plus or minus, that means that this this is not a function. Remember that happened before where uh, there's one input gives you two outputs, the vending machine. If I punch in zero, I don't know if I'm getting plus or minus. So that's not a function. If the function has no inverse function, state that no inverse exists. So you could just say not a function. 16. Pick 16 because something kind of strange happens on 16. y equals 1 over x. To get the inverse, we put x in for y and y in for x. And then we need to solve that for y. So a couple things you could do. Algebra, you, could, you can flip both sides. So you could write this as x over 1 and flip both sides completely. If, if that bothers you, you don't like that. You could multiply both sides by y, and then divide both sides by x, and get y equals 1 over x, which means the inverse function is 1 over x, which is a little bit strange because it's the same thing as the original function. There's a couple of special functions like that where their inverse is the same as the original. Um, if you remember that an inverse undoes what the original function does. So if the first function flips it over, so if we stick 3 into the function box, we would get out 1 third. And then if we put that into the inverse box, that's a negative 1, we flip it over again and we're back to 3. So 1 over x and 1 over x, even though they're the same function, they are inverses of one another. It's kind of a weird situation. Uh, let's skip down to number 18 and 19 just because those are the questions. I haven't seen them in a while. Average rate of change. Remember that's fancy words for, for slope. So just good old algebra 1 slope formula. Um, so I've got my x values. I will need the y values. So I need f of negative 1, f of 2. So if I plug in negative 1, let's see, I get 2 plus 4 plus 1 is 7. Plug in 2, I get 8 minus 8 plus 1 is 1. So the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and it doesn't matter which one you call 1 and 2, as long as you keep the order the same. 
Um, since this one was 2 and 1, I'm going to use that as my 2 and my 1. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Some negative signs in there, but that's okay. Negative 6 over 3 would be negative 2. And one of my answer choices is negative 2. Again, uh, average rate of change is the same thing as slope. So I, you're not going to forget that, I don't think. It's just are you going to mess up any of the little steps along the way. 19, difference quotient. Um, difference quotient. Oh, we did not give it here. We will give it on the test. f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So I need to first find f of x plus h. So I'll use f of x. I'll plug in x plus h. Hopefully you've done this enough times where you can foil this or square that without having to write out all the terms. Some of you missed this on the quiz because you didn't you either forgot that term or you forgot there were two of them. So x squared plus 2hx plus h squared plus 2 minus f of x x squared plus 2 all over h. So the x squareds will cancel. Twos will cancel. And then we can divide what's left by h. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to do this. I get 2x plus h, which is answer choice b. So hopefully you find that helpful to see me work some of those, even though you weren't there to ask questions um, about them. Again, stay tuned. I'll also post a video of the review worksheet with answers shown for that. And the test will not be in Schoology. The test will be uh, paper, pencil, you know, regular old test, um, at least for the in-person people. For my virtual people, it will be a Schoology situation. But I'll send you an email uh, about that for the, for the virtual people. All right, good luck. Again, send me an email or a Schoology message if you need help with something.